look, you can have a boring classroom. Oh, look, there's my map of the United States. It's an educational classroom. <laughs> or you could do something really cool like this. <gasps> but in order to have a green screen, you need to light it up right. Otherwise, you end up with junk like this. That's where you need a little backfill. And it's not expensive. I'll show you how to do this on the cheap for sure. For sure. My name is Chuck Fresh. I'm an ESL teacher. Follow me along this journey of special green screen classrooms. You can't replace this. There's no way to do this unless you're actually sitting in a classroom. And you need to have good light and permission and Wi-Fi and all these things that most people don't have. And if you're at school, then you can't take advantage of teaching from your home in your skivvies. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? I'm wearing pants just in case. Or you could do something like this. <gasps> Hi. I'm teaching from space. How cool is this? You can't do this if you have a map behind you because it's boring. So cool stuff like this you can do with a green screen. You can put yourself anywhere in the world. Look, I'm in Paris, in Gay Paris. Look how clean that looks. Now I'll show you my lighting here, what I have going on here. Let me go back to my classroom. But basically, all I have is this. I have this big green thing. Now people say you can use sheets. And yes, you could use sheets. You don't even have to use green. You could use blue, you could use red, but you have to use a color that you're not gonna wear. Problem with using red is a lot of your facial features will be red or your lips. And anything that is the color of this will become invisible. And that gets kind of weird. Like if I take the red out of this, I start to disappear. And you can see through my red shirt. So that's why people have gone with green over time because not a lot of people wear green. Of course, green comes back with these fashion. Never mind, I'm starting here. So let's talk about lighting for a second. I'll show you my lighting here. Can I do this? I think I can. Let me turn this off. Boop. So this is what it really looks like. First of all, I'll show you. This is just a green piece of fabric and it's held on stand. We have little clips here. I do a radio show and podcast and all that stuff. So and it's got to be actually bigger than you. It's got to be able to fit in the whole camera. And you need some side to side, especially if you're standing up and teaching. But the most important thing about your background is you shouldn't be able to see through it. It should be fairly opaque. You can see a little bit of sun here when the sun starts to kick through. But for the most part, it's pretty straight up. You can't see through it. And the other important thing you need to do is make sure there's not a lot of wrinkles in it. Because if you have wrinkles and folds, then you're going to get different colors. Like I have a few here. I need to tighten this up a little bit. So make sure it's uh, I have this steamer thing. And I'll put a link in the comments below. It's a cheap steamer we bought on Amazon. And this thing, when it came from the factory, it was folded. It had creases all over it. And those made darker areas, which showed up and kind of laid real funny in the uh, green screen. And you end up with artifacts like this. Like down here. And down here and that looks kind of dumb and you end up with weird shadows and stuff so i had like there was like lines in it you could see it and it's not really cool but then when you iron it out it's a little bit better and of course you're going to need some backup let's show you the lights i have here now i'm in this well-lit room so that actually used to be my dining room which has been converted and i have these lights up here can i change this here to automatic let's change it to right light so I have this light with LEDs. I find that white light tends to work a lot better, representing colors more faithfully than um, incandescent lights. And also you save a lot of money on the LEDs too. And also I have one more light here, and I'll put the link to this too. This is an affordable studio light that I use on my remotes when I look at all the green disappearing here. It's kind of cool. Green screen's amazing. But I use these lights... Uh, on my studio gigs too when we do live interviews with bands and check that bad boy out They're not too expensive. I think it was about I'll put a link I think it was like 120 bucks for two of these guys and they're LED lights and the cool thing about these is they're adjustable You can turn them down And what's neat about this is you can add yellow So if you like the incandescent or if it works better with your makeup or not you could turn yellow or you can combine yellow and white 
to get exactly the color you want. It's really hard to see on this camera, but but that's basically all you need, a little bit of fill light. Now, it doesn't have to be an expensive studio light either. It could be any light at all. You could use, I used to use a lamp, just a standard house lamp with, uh, well, here it is, a matter of fact. I took the shade off. And it has a little LED tube in it. Now I just turn this on and this would light up that corner. So any corners or areas that are shaded by me, because obviously the lights are high and my chair is blocking it. So that's the shadow you're seeing back here. And that's what my fill light does. My fill light fills those shadows. Let me turn it back where it was. And when you turn that fill light on, you can't see that green down here anymore. Also, you want to put it so it's not in front of you so that when you put your hand in front of it, you don't get a noticeable shadow. If I do that over here, you can kind of see a shadow and it looks weird. But And it gives you some depth, too. I can jump all the way back. You begin to see the shadow as I get really close to it. I'm actually touching it and pushing on it now. You can see the shadow over here. Now, I have two fill lights. So I put one on each side, typically. But I used one in the studio, so I never put it back. But it's working pretty good with the one fill light, right? I mean, these are grade school kids this isn't studio quality stuff you're trying to do here you're just trying to fill in the background to get really cool backgrounds and there's millions of royalty free usage free things you can use on the internet here's one of them let me kind of adjust that light again i turned it way down turn that way back up again on these guys you have adjustments and you can turn the fill light up and down you put it too bright it makes it look a little weird and you don't want it too bright either. What you want to do is try to get the most even green you can get. Like the more even the green, let's try to pull this out. But this isn't bad. You're not seeing that in the chroma key. They call it chroma key. Your screen screen is the same thing, but you're not seeing that difference in there. But I mean, your objective is try to get it as flat and as even, as uniformly green as possible. Now, there's a lot more deeper things. You're supposed to have an overhead light coming on you and the top of your head is supposed to shine. You're supposed to use three lights, and there's a lot of videos for that, but let's keep this simple. So all we're trying to do is get a really cool backdrop for our classroom. I've got a studio I use for one of my podcasts, and it looks like I'm in a studio. And you can really, you can match the light up by just tweaking your lights. If you have a dimmer, that's even better. If you have daylight, I have some daylight coming in this room. Use your daylight, too, because that'll give you a nice little fill. And remember, light changes throughout the day. If you're teaching in the morning, you'll see the lights start to come in and it'll start to change this thing. So you may need to adjust your backlight because you remember you need to keep that green uniform. And as the sunlight comes in, depending on where you are, you could end up with weird shadows and the shadows are going to show up because it's a different shade of green. My room needs to be uniform, right? But an uh, endless supply of classrooms you can download and use. This one actually was from my vendors. They use this in one of their emails, and I borrowed that one too. So, and really cool stuff. It's just really unbelievable what you can do. I use the Minicam, but there's other ones out there. Minicam tends to be a CPU hog on some older computers. And this one out, it's punching about 26%. And uh, I'm only shooting it for. That's the other thing too I want to tell you about is um, resolution. I uh, taught at 240 this morning as a test to see if my students can tell. And if you look at this bottom window here, uh, it's hardly noticeable because it's, if it's smaller, you can use a lower resolution. If it's a bigger picture, if you were doing this full screen over here, then you'd want to use something a little bit bigger. But um, 480 is good. You don't need 720. 720 will really kick your uh, CPU in the high gear and you can even do 1080. But then um, the widescreen formats, whoops, they show up a little weird in your vendors thing you don't see the top and the bottom that's a little bizarre and you can see my cpu is dragging so 480 even 240 sometimes 480 seems to work best i don't have any problem with that with the green screen without the green screen um there's some other really cool things too i'll show you i'll do another video i've been doing this lately and the kids love it i'll fill my screen in when i come in i'll use the fill tool and i'll be like this <laughs> hello bow bow they say something and I'll go a little bit more. How are you? If they say they're angry, I fill it up again. So there's all kinds of really neat things you could do. And you don't need the green screen for this, but the green screen really the, the benefit is the backgrounds and it just separates you, it sets you apart from everybody else who's doing what you do. Chuck Fresh, please like, subscribe, comment below if you have any ideas or any tips about green screen or something that you're using or if you found a sheet at Walmart that worked great, that's awesome. 
you might need to put two or something black behind it so you get the uniform green. Remember, the uniformity is the most important thing. You don't want any differences in the shadow or the grayness because uh, your chroma key is going to pick that up. Chuck Fresh, ESL teacher. Peace out. Yeah.